One of the things that we typically do is when our uh, we have our AutoCAD files posted into, and notice I'm actually on the web app here, we can set up our uh, projects. And with that, before I you know jump into showing you some of the things, let me just show you the project aware, um, and I'll show it to you from um, here as well as inside of AutoCAD. So you can see I have a list of different uh, projects underneath my Autodesk doc entry here. And um, if I go to the three dots here, you'll notice down right here, um, if I click on that, there we go, right here, you'll notice it has the project support files. So what this is, is a um, it's the project aware. It allows us to post things. Now you'll notice that I got my templates here. I got some fonts listed inside of here. And this is specific to this project that's called Tower Project. So the Tower Project has all of these support. And you'll notice in this example here, I don't have a hatch pattern file that I, and I would like to add that in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this upload uh, option here. And down at the bottom, I have a shortcut to a um, uh, to the, the support file. And then it's just, just in your user's profile, wherever you have your PAT saved, you might have this saved on a, a shared directory or anything like that. But this is a file that contains all of the hatch pattern that AutoCAD uses. Now that I have attached this to this, this means that anybody that's part of this tower project will be able to download these support files that are now attached and added to the project up on that um, Autodesk doc. So you'll see that we also have not only the hatch pattern, we got line type, we got the plot style. You know, previously, in order to include a lot of this stuff here, you would actually do sort of a, a basically an e-transmit, right, to collect everything. And how many times have you gone through that e-transmit only to realize at the end you forgot to hit, you know, hit that one checkbox to allow you to collect all the supporting files? I've done that a couple of times and then realize, oh, I got to go back and make sure I create an e-transmit to include all that information. So this is just to streamline the, you know, the Autodesk docs and being able to have all of your support file up there. So we call this the um, project aware. And so now when I say done, if I go down to my AutoCAD, I'm going to go back into 26 here. If I go into my options, uh, command here, you're going to see that at the top here, project aware settings are available for this power uh, project. So we, you know, in order for this part to work, we need to, from the uh, doc side, create our projects. And then finally, I learned this uh, myself, but if you do not have the correct version of the Autodesk desktop connector, and you can see the version that I have right now, it's a 16.14.1.2577. This version supported that I had a previous uh, in install and it was like the 16.12 or 13 or something like that. And it, I couldn't get the project assist to, or the project aware to work. I couldn't get the functionality to work. And I'm like, what's going on? I know I got the project, you know, all set up and it was just that one little thing. So. It does matter in making sure that you have the latest and greatest version of this desktop connector if you intend to use that. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and bring back the options here just to show you the process is similar to what you would expect on, as we did on the AutoCAD, um, you know, on the web version. So you click on this, you would just go from the beginning setup and you can go through and set up and it's a wizard literally where it will allow you to go and set this up and, and add the supporting file. Now here, you notice it didn't really give me, you know, um, you know what items, it went ahead and just collected everything that I needed and added it to the support file. It created a folder now that is basically project settings and that's listed inside of my um, Autodesk docs for this particular project called, you know, Tower Project. So you also notice at the top, you can see that, it, you know, we now have a, a notification up here that says that this is a current project and you can see that it, it is tied into the Autodesk doc. Now, in addition to the, um, the enhancements that they've done inside of AutoCAD, I'm gonna go back to, and forgive me for going back and forth, I wanted to kind of show you some of the things that are online before coming back to AutoCAD. Um, is creating markups. And so one of the things that, um, here's that support folder that I was talking about that was just created. Um, 
One of the things that um, has been a big uh, part of collaboration is markups, right? So whether you're doing it through using the Trace app, which we have right here on the left panel here. So usually you're you're in the properties or in the layers settings and on the AutoCAD for web. Um, if you go to the Trace section, we have a markup that's already right here. So I can create new traces. I can add uh, to the traces, add additional markup, perhaps add text in here and things like that. And one of the things that, um, you know, was nice about this is that it would be able to, trans, you know, once you saved it as a trace and you have it, uh, the document saved, it would allow you to um, bring it down to AutoCAD. So now you can go back into AutoCAD and bring it in here. But it was really solely based on you know markup that were generated here. One of the enhancements that they've done with the um, uh, markups, being able to import them, is that you can take PDFs. Now, whether the PDF is generated with inside of you know uh, the markups here uh, through the Google Docs or if it was from Adobe, Autodesk has enhanced the ability for markups to be recognized. So I can take this PDF and begin making markups. I can begin drawing things on here. I can, you know, do exit through thing. If there was text or something on my, on my, uh, uh, on my, uh, you know, document here and I do a strike through, it would recognize things like that. And so with these markups, we're able to create the markup, whether it's a, a JPEG or if it's a PNG file or a, a PDF. Um, we can create them through the uh, Autodesk doc, even if the PDF was generated by some other, um, you know, uh, software. Or if you did markups uh, from the, uh, um, let's say, uh, Adobe, like through their um, markup tools, you can also bring that in here and the markup tool would be recognized. So inside of AutoCAD, the ability to do that would just be if you would go and um, you're going to um, go into the Collaborate tab and you'll see right here where it says Traces and on the right side here, it has the markup import. If I go to the Trace palette, it brings in the traces that I've done from up on the web. You'll notice that I did not save the, the secondary text that I brought in. Um, but if I saved it, it takes just a few minutes and then the system updates and then I can be able to see this. Anybody that would be tied in that's associated with this project, and I'll go back to showing the project management and how that works, you can add uh, individuals to that project and be able to include you know, their roles as an architect, as a structural engineer, as an electrical engineer, um, perhaps they're a project manager. They will all be able to access the same information, and that's the whole purpose of this collaboration. So, you know, maybe a project manager doesn't necessarily need to have AutoCAD installed on their machine, but they can have access to, access to the AutoCAD through the web so that they can be a part of the markups or they can be a part of the, you know, the collaboration efforts that everybody puts together with that. Now, what's nice about this is that I can actually go into the drawing side here and uh, look at what's, uh, you know, in my drawing and then go back to the trace and review it. But the, the really cool thing is where I go to import. This is where it really gets interesting. So I have a couple of markups that were done as a PDF and I'm going to bring this in here. And it's going to take just a few moments for it to process and bring in those. And what it does, it overlays my markups over there. And it's asking me now, AutoCAD is asking me, hey, do you want to accept the placement of where these markups are? And it looks good. This is what I, exact, what I have on that markup. So I'm going to go ahead and hit accept. And then right up here, go to the drawings button here. And what you'll see is that there's this little lightning bolt. And you'll notice that there's this little blue box or this blue, I guess, arrow. Right now, what it's going through is detecting the markups and it has completed that. Now, since this is still a technical preview, there are things that it does recognize and say, hey, that's a markup, I think, but it's really not a markup. It's just, you know, you got the magenta line going around that. So, you know, these little things here, you know, through the Autodesk AI, it's going to assume that, okay, this is a markup. It doesn't mean that it has to be a markup. You see, I can take any of these, let's say this one right here, just clicking on the boundary and it recognized, hey, this is a this is a potential for a, uh, a rectangular cloud. So I can go ahead and click on that and it's changed that over. 
what about this bubble here? This was not really, I didn't do a cloud on it. I just circled this. What can I do with this? It's the same thing. I can go in here and change it to a polygon like a bubble and add that in here. It also recognized the words that I've actually typed in through that markup. And what's nice about this, it gives me the option to choose whether I want to add it as a multi-leader, as a single, you know, just a, a single line multi-text, or I can, if there was existing text here or existing text spot, I can update that existing text spot by going through this workflow. So I'm gonna go ahead and just enter, enter it as a multi-line text and just kind of add that in here. And the usual, you know, things that you do to control that in terms of its height is, you know, going and do the text editing and things like that and updating it. So come up here and changing the height. Height. So if I make this 12 inches, for example, there we go. And now I've actually made that text a little bit larger. But just from the markups, I was able to extract all this information directly into my AutoCAD files. So it's a really nice functionality to be able to take that. And of course, I can exit out that and now I have all the markups as part of this. Now, one of the const, uh, one of the things that they've improved, and they've actually introduced um, this particular functionality of uh, using the um, I, smart blocks or the detect and convert, is the ability to detect, you know, um, objects in here that may be repetitively used. And so, as I go through this, it's going to bring up this palette here, and you'll notice it says Tech Preview. It's it's still in you know uh, the phases of you know starting up and and uh, development will continue on. Um, but this year they've actually allowed us to uh, to do a little bit more where we can modify existing blocks. So if it detects uh, um, you know existing block that matches the same geometry, it allows us to update all the other geometry as does block. And so right now you can see that in this drawing, it has detected all of these components here. And one of the things is perhaps the chairs. So if we take a look at that, there's 66 instances of the chairs and they're located throughout the model in here. And um, you'll see there's one word right here that allows us just to convert them. And we can go through the process. Now, this was something that was introduced, um, you know, um, in 2024, I believe that you can actually go through and um, detect these blocks and add and create a new block or go ahead and add it to an existing block. So for example, I already have the chair here in place. I wanna use that, specify what layers that it's going to be. Um, I like to leave things on layer zero because I wanna be able to take these chairs and assign them to a layer afterwards that it inherits. So if they were existing chairs or new chairs, maybe I have two different layers, that uh, setting uh, setting that block to layer zero allows for me to put those those chairs or those blocks on two separate layers, and then their display or their colors will be uh, shown. As, so I'm gonna go ahead and convert, and now you can see that it, it, it's asking me to accept the placement. I can accept it, and it'll go through and update all 66 of them. But the the really cool thing that they have done now is th with the search functionality. I can go down here and I can search for the chairs that I was working with earlier and convert those. Or if I wanted to namely pick out a certain set of text in a boundary or a box like I have here and convert these into a block. This is the new functionality. So it's recognized that I've had six of these here and these are going to be, if I wanna convert them into a block, this is where it has, um, Notice right now, it can actually take the, include the variation, convert these into existing block, gives them a new name, and it takes these and creates them as an attribute. So I can call these, you know, uh, let's say cubicle. Names. And then I can convert that. And now each one of these are now a block with the text already associated with them. So with the, the detection and the search, it allows for us to identify all of those items that are repetitively used within our AutoCAD drawings.
The markup tool that um, uh, one of the things I wanted to bring up and I forgot about, uh, maybe I did. Um, the markup tool now can take, I think I did, uh, where you can use Adobe uh, or other markup tools for PDFs or anything like that. It would identify those and bring those in. The detection will pick that up. Um, the insights, that's the next thing I want to talk about. So when we're working with our drawings, inside of Windows Explorer, we only get very few information about, okay, what was changed between one drawing or the other? You know, I used to take this, um, you know, if I were to go and I was doing a collaboration, I would go and do a save as and use this drawing compare and I'll have two different versions of the same drawings for just so I can compare what was the changes of things like that, right? Autodesk actually has brought out within their um, um, activity insight, the ability to review some of the changes that happened to the drawing at a very high level overview. So what kind of changes have happened to this drawing since then? And if we take a look here, you can see some of the things I've done today where there was a trace that was created. Some of these traces that were created were actually created on the web. That is still all part of the document's history. So whether you do it on the web cloud or, the, uh, uh, the, or doing it from the application itself, your history is stored within here. And every time you go through like, for example, you notice it has to save. You can actually look down here and it gives you a little bit a detail, sort of a high level detail, I guess, overview of what you've done. Here are some of the uh, changes that have done have been done. I have 72 blocks that were actually created. Um, I had one static block rep, uh, that was created and that was the text there. Um, and if we take a look down here, well, what's the workflows that I've done? You know, I, you know, create, you know, with 36% reusable content management blocks, right? Um, then down here, how many minutes it took me to edit that? Now, if I was just doing this much work here and I spent 40 minutes, then, you know, maybe it's a CAD manager and be like, you must have just left that open for quite some time, right? You know, it's not like a, you know, um, track for like billable project or anything like that. But it does give you a little bit, you know, as you are working with your software and, you know, for you as a user, it gives you the feedback as to what it took. Uh, to get to that edit or something like that. So we can review these edits through the activity insights now. And this is something that, that was also new. And then the final thing that I like to share before opening up for a, a Q and A is the center line marks and um, uh, what with center lines and the center line marks, uh, what the changes that they add to that. And so, what I used to do in order for me to do the center line, you'll notice there's a center line mark and here's the center line here. I used to go, let me bring up my AutoCAD 2025. This is 2025. I used to go and add my layer drop down here just so that I can go and, and specify what layer I want on some of these tools out, you know, and especially with center line and, and uh, center marks. I would come in here and choose the appropriate layer that I want and then I would go and click on the command and go through here. If you notice down here in 2025, you, when I click on the center mark here, it just says select a circle or arc to add the center mark. And then if I go to the center line, it says, you know, select the first line, allows you to specify two lines and, and it will create a center line. But there was nothing more to that, right? Now, if we go back to 2026, one of the things that they've done is now we have this ability to specify our layers here. So I can use the current layer or I can come down here and choose the layer that I want. And then with the setting chose, like if I chose, for example, chair from this point on, because this is set, this is specific to these two commands. Now, if I go into the command itself, you'll notice in the command line down at the bottom, it also has the layer options down here, which allows us to basically, you can see it has chair set. I can go and just type in question mark and select the object that you know I would want you know at a certain layer and you'll see the panels is actually on a panels 201 with the question mark I now can use that to push the layers it's kind of like a match property but allows you to preemptively select the object that are assigned to a layer and then make those center lines or center marks following those layer settings